Hey, it's Derek from WatchMeCode.net. So shortly after doing a gentle introduction to functional JavaScript with Chet Harrison, I was thinking about the subject of currying. It's something that I've tried to learn several times, really understand what it means through various functional programming languages, but it's never really stuck appropriately in my head. And so I got into the Watch Me Code community Slack and went into the functional JS channel and kind of halfway sort of made a joke about equating currying to that super tasty curry sauce that I love in Indian food and Thai food and other places. And uh, I was immediately corrected from Aaron McAdam, who basically said, well, no, it's actually named after Haskell Curry. Now, honestly, I thought he was joking. I was like, yeah, okay, Haskell Curry, haha, ha, that's funny. He just picked a couple of names from functional programming, Haskell the language, and Curry, because that's what this is, you know, that's what I'm thinking about what I'm talking about at the moment. But it turned out he was actually right. I did a quick Google, and I found Haskell Curry, if I could spell Haskell correct, Haskell Curry. And what I came up with was this Wikipedia page along with other pictures and information about him. So it turns out there actually is a person named Haskell Curry, or was a person named Haskell Curry, for which the Haskell language was named, as well as the currying process in software development. Now I started reading this just out of half interest, half shock that Haskell Curry was an actual person, and eventually I came to the page on currying, found a link there, so I'm just going to Wikipedia that real quick. Wikipedia currying. And I started reading this page on currying and kind of sort of started to make sense. It, it kind of says that currying is taking a function that takes multiple parameters and dividing it up by sending, d dividing it up into a function that will take one parameter at a time, returning a new function that takes one parameter, returning a new function that takes one parameter, until you get to the very end of this chain where the only thing you have left to do is actually evaluate the original function because you have all the parameters that you need. Now, apparently this is used in some evaluation of math or statistics or, or something, but it, it was the idea that struck me there is like oh that kind of sort of halfway makes sense but as i the, the the thing that really struck me was as i started scrolling down and reading more on this page i got to these little math formulas down here and i i saw this and i said oh okay that makes sense that's just a function that takes an x and y parameter and it does y divided by x no big deal but what really hit me was when i saw this and I, I realized, oh, you know what? This looks a lot like some modern JavaScript that people have been writing with ES6 arrow functions. Here we have a function that takes a parameter and it returns another function that takes a parameter and then does a calculation on those two parameters. And so I thought, huh, I wonder if I could do that in JavaScript. So I went over to my console and I opened up Node and I did some basic testing here. I started with a function, we'll call it add. So I'll say var add equals function a comma b. And actually I wanna do the arrow syntax instead of function. So I'll just say a comma b, and I will have that return a plus b. So now I have an add function where I can say one and two, and there's my three. I mean, that's pretty typical, right? But I want to curry this function. I want to create a function that re takes in one parameter returns another function that takes in a second parameter and then executes the actual addition. So let's redefine add. We'll say var add equals, we're gonna use arrow syntax again. I'm gonna say a, and then I'm going to have that implemented as a lambda expression or arrow function here. But instead of doing a plus b, I'm going to define another arrow function that takes a b parameter and it's going to do the actual work of A plus B. Now this code honestly took me a few minutes to write. I didn't quite understand what I was writing at first. I've not really dealt with nested arrow functions like this a lot in the past. So I wanted to see what it looked like without the arrow functions. And what it came down to was something closer to function add A, which would return function 
with one parameter b and that would return a plus b. So this is essentially the same line of code. It's much more verbose, but it basically does the same thing, assuming I got all the syntax correct at this point in time. So having done that, what I created was actually a curried function. So I can say add one, and it's not going to return you know, a, a, a numeral value, it's going to return another function. So if I say var add one equals add one, and then I look at add one, and I call dot two string on that because it's a function, it'll give me the code inside of that function. So now I have b a plus b. Well, this already has a closure around a. So if I call add one and I pass in two, I'm going to end up with three. So instead of giving me a single function that has two parameters, my curried version of add takes in one parameter of the, for the first function. It returns a second function that takes in one parameter. And then that result gives me the A plus B that I'm looking for. And this for me was kind of one of those little light bulb moments, like literally like, ah. it was incredible for me to, to actually see this working and, and kind of understand what was going on. Now, I'm not saying I completely, totally understand the point of currying at, at this time, but at least I have a better idea of what currying actually is. It's the process of taking a function that accepts multiple parameters and having it transformed into a series of functions that each take one parameter, which will eventually give you the final calculation or final result based on all of the parameters being passed into all of the functions that are returned. And there's a lot of different things that you can do this. I've already shown you this add one, where I now have an add one function, and I can call add one on any number that I want, and it'll return you know that number plus one. This is interesting to me because it kind of sets up a lot of the composability and a lot of the explicit structure of programs that functional programming tries to move us towards. And having the ability to curry something as simple as add and then be able to create all of these different very specific functions that add a specific number. I mean, it's kind of useless, honestly. It's just a little demo program. But at the same time, it's, it's powerful. I think there's a lot here that can be really cool and really expressive in code. So that's it. That's my little aha moment with currying that I had a couple of days ago. And I just wanted to share that with you. And if you're interested in learning about currying and learning about functional programming, well, this Wikipedia article is honestly kind of hard to read. So be sure to check out the watchmecode.net site where you'll find the gentle introduction to functional JavaScript, but you'll also find information about the community Slack that we have, where we have all kinds of great discussion, including the discussion on currying inside of the Functional JS channel. Thanks for watching and happy JavaScripting.